thank you for coming. And I am Michelle. I own Herbivore with Josh, the most ridiculous man alive. And um, we, uh, we, this is a talk, just a, probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops. Um, I did a different version of this in um, November at Farm Sanctuary in California. And um, just talked to, there are lots of different people there, people that are vegetarian, vegan, and then people that had no idea what they were getting themselves into when they went to visit farm animals. Um, and it was really great because, you know, it was a chance to talk about vegan food and rethinking the holidays. Um, and obviously that was about Thanksgiving in particular. Um, but I know everybody here is already vegan. Um, and, you know, when they're talking about doing different kinds of activism, you know, just by being who you are, you already are an activist in some ways. But I think what the idea is, is we want people to do more, and, and it's easy to do, to do more. Um, so, you know, we all didn't start out vegan unless you were, you know, my daughter and uh, Felix. <laughs> um, or maybe there are some, you know, vegans for life in here. But, um, you know, we all, we all started out probably eating meat in our lives, too. So that's just something to remember when we are entering into this holiday time. And, you know, I have my parents... Um, Still, you know, I'm going to be 40 years old next year, and my daughter's been vegan since birth, and my whole life is about animal rights and getting people to not eat animals and to care more about animals. And I visit my parents several times a year, do my daughterly duty, and every single time, it's, they still act like, my mom says, is this legal? And she's holding up an orange. And it's like, <laughs> it's completely ridiculous, mom. D is that an animal? Does that come from an animal? of course I can eat an orange, you know, of course Ruby can eat cranberries. It's just, you know, she, she acts as if it's the most foreign thing in the world. Um, and in a, in a sense, you know, she feels that I've rejected everything that she raised me to be. You know, not only am I not Republican and playing golf, but I'm not eating animals and I don't want to eat bacon for breakfast. Or I don't want to eat eggs and, you know, my daughter doesn't eat hydrogenated oil and all these crazy things. But, you know, it's something that we just have to remember that we've already rethought the traditions of our lives. My mom and dad haven't. They're probably not. I'm kind of, you know, I'm coming to that conclusion and that's just fine. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop caring or stop trying to get them to realize that, you know, you love to look at those cows and they're so cute, but then you want to eat one or, you know, when you say things, well, why don't you just eat a dog? And they think that's so crazy. So they're not gonna probably come around to my way of being, and and I'm definitely not going to um, to catch them or you know ensnare them in my vegan trap if I'm calling the you know the meal a carcass. So um, I was joking with Chad that that we should all you know have a cleansing to together here where we can say you know oh my God there's a carcass on the table and we could say it now together because that is definitely not something to say when you are sitting around the table with your parents that you maybe see once a year. Um, and they're definitely then going to, you know, classify you as crazy and write off anything else good that you might say. So that's one piece of advice for me. Don't use the word carcass at the holiday table. <laughs> um, unless your family really likes good debate. That might be good, but I don't recommend it. Um, so back to what I was saying. Um, you've already rethought the traditions of your life and you've switched and you don't eat animals anymore and you feel so positive and so wonderful about that and of course you want everybody else to feel that same way you want you want your mom and dad or your sister or brother or whoever it is that you're sharing that table with who's not in that same place as you you want them to get it to have that moment um, and it's really really hard when they don't um, and it's easy to get upset about it and to be you know, to use the word carcass or, you know, things like that. Um, but that's definitely not going to help the thing, help, help the situation. Um, remember that you, you know, you used to be like them, right? Um, and you're not anymore. And you have these very strong feelings. And it's good to use those strong feelings to, to do positive things. You know, you've made this positive choice. So, you know, you, you're going to feel really emotional if there's, you know, a, a dead animal on the table, right? And 
don't don't talk about it while you guys are at the table, but people might you know, ask you questions and you can always go back and you know, go and say to them, hey, I'd love to talk with you about this after dinner, you know, but I don't think that talking about it at the table with people is probably gonna be the best thing. Um, but your, your feelings are things that you shouldn't have to apologize for. You know, if you get upset, that's okay. I mean, you're a compassionate person or you wouldn't be vegan, right? So don't apologize for feeling like just feeling sad or feeling frustrated. You're compassionate and you need to own that um, and just remember that the people around you might not be in that same place. Um, and a, a friend of mine sent me an email um, just yesterday that I got around to reading this morning and it was just a bunch of little thoughts about, about you know, kind of this same topic. You're going into the holiday season and, you know, or you're an activist and you get frustrated, you get burned out. And one of the bullet points was that you are not the radical sitting you know, at the table. You're, you're really not the crazy one, the, the one that's not eating an animal. You're the one that has come to the realization that that's not a good thing to do. You're acting compassionately. You don't want to you know, imprison animals and feed them food that they're not supposed to eat just so that you can enjoy the way they taste. That's not crazy. And every day that we go on, more and more people are becoming that way. They're becoming like us, where they don't, where they're, they're, where they're also not the radical. They kind of have come to be clear, like, God, it, you know, it is insane to do this to animals, like, just so that we can enjoy their, their bodies or whatever. So I love that idea because oftentimes, you know, we are the radicals or the extremists, the vegan extremists, um, you know, but the potlucks and all this crazy stuff. <laughs> oh, but anyways, um, so we do have though that tradition of the meal that you have to sit down. And you know, it's such a time that's just riddled with like, you know, your, your family, we do this before dinner and then dad takes a picture with the roast. And I can't tell you how many pictures I have in my life of like a ham or you know some weird or a picture of a turkey on a table and the china is all set and it's beautiful um, that's what my mom and dad think is like a great holiday tradition oh remember that and that's you know that's their thing and i have to bite my tongue and i don't say anything because if i do it's a rejection of them like i was saying and you know it's not them i'm rejecting completely <laughs> but um but it's just it's that part of their tradition. I want to sit down with them. I love them. And I, you know, it's a job sometimes to have to do that, but I want to share my time with them and I just have to accept that, that that's the way they're going to be. Um, so at the same time, um, I need to, you know, remember all those things that my mom did teach me, you know, pick your battles. Um, don't get in fights with folks who only want to fight and not listen or bite your tongue. And one of my favorite things to say um, is, you know, what I learned in the few years of Catholic school that I went to is do unto others as you would have others do unto you. And it's like, you know, I don't want to have them poke fun at me while I'm sitting at the holiday table with them. So I'm not going to say anything negative to them either. And I hope that they can respect me just as much by not poking fun at me.